Olá, meus amigos. Hello, my friends. God bless all of you. He blesses by opening your understanding in respect to his word, in respect to his thoughts, so that each of you may think, reason, weigh, etc., evaluate everything which he said, and that he may, you may take a decision, you take a right decision of what you will do with your life, because your life is yours. You belong to yourself. Now, you belong does not mean that you are the Lord of yourself. No. You are the owner of your destiny, of your future. You are the owner of your future. You decide your future. It's not the destination. It's not the stars. It's not the horoscopes which they make up here, which leads our destiny. No. Our destiny is made by our own head. We decide our destiny ourselves, not our mother, father, not the loved ones, none of this. It's not universities, no. Each one is led by their own thoughts, because thoughts makes you to take an action, a positive or negative action, it depends on your head. If you take a negative action, you will reap the fruits of this negative action. If you take a positive action, you will reap the fruits of this positive action. It's that story. You plant rice, you don't want to reap beans. You plant beans, you don't want to reap rice. You don't expect rice. So that's how it works. Everything we plant, we reap. If we plant good, we reap good. If we plant evil, we reap evil. This, whether you believe in God or not, whether you are religious or not, whether you have an astronomical faith in God or not, it doesn't matter. What you plant, you will reap. So this is the main thought of the sacred scripture. God gives his thoughts so that we may submit to his thoughts. If we don't want to submit to his thoughts, then we will reap the fruit of our thoughts. So, my friend, it's important that you have your understanding clear, open, that you may make the right choice in your life. The Apostle Paul says that the God of this world, the God of this world blinded the understanding of the unbelievers, those who live according to their lusts. So the God of this world has blinded the understanding of people. And this is notorious as we see. Everyone sees this. But what I would want to say to you for God to open your understanding is in respect of the prophecies, the prophecies. You see, for example, when you read in the Bible, there in Matthew 4, which says, Then the Holy Spirit led Jesus to the desert to be tempted by the devil, meaning the God himself led his son to be tempted, to be tested in the desert. And he went. But he went through the test. He fasted, he prayed, etc. 
he fought so that he may serve his father. The Holy Spirit took him to the desert. The Holy Spirit as well has taken many of his children to the desert. Problems, health problems, family problems, financial problems, problems of all kinds, of all nature. God allows that these problems come. God leads us to the deserts. I've been various times in the desert, but God was merciful towards me and he delivered me from dying in the desert. And I want you to know as well that besides the Holy Spirit or when the Holy Spirit does not take us to the desert to be tempted, to test our faith, our fidelity, our loyalty. At times, and you know this happens a lot, we take ourselves to the desert not to be tested or tempted, but to reap the fruit of the disobedience, the rebelliousness of the Word of God. For example, the pastor, member, or whoever is of God or supposedly of God had their family well structured, they had peace in the house, they fought for others, but one day he was taken by a passion and then he fell in temptation. And then you know, there is nothing in this world which is not hidden that won't be revealed. His sin came to light and the marvelous family he had evaporated, melted, and he was without a flaw. He had no flaw. Then he fell in faith and started to live his life recklessly and today is fallen, prostrated, does not know what to do with his life. He doesn't know what to do. Perhaps, if he has that desire to say, Oh my God, is there a chance for me? Is there really a chance for me? I knew your word, but I fell, I messed up consciously, but I'm here fallen, prostrate, I'm here lost, I don't know what to do with my life, give me direction. If this person is humble enough to recognize their sin and ask for the mercy of God, God comes upon them. God stretches his hands towards that person. The problem, my friend, the problem is that at times, the person does not give himself fully. You know that proud person, big-nosed, arrogant, hard-headed, thinks he knows everything about the sacred scriptures. He doesn't find forgiveness or repentance. He does not feel his sin. And this is a big mistake. Because when a person reaches this point, then it's because they are really destined to death. And they have no way out. But if there is a sadness of a person saying, come on, I'm in this problem. God have mercy on me. The person is humble to recognize then there is salvation for that person. And I do this program daily to try and rescue those who are like this, those who are fallen, prostrate, 
distant, discouraged, lost, but they still have inside of them a bit of humbleness. For these, there, are, there is salvation. In fact, the Apostle Paul says that there are two types of sadness. The first type is provoked by the world. The other is provoked by God. The sadness of the world is to death, meaning the person is involved with the world with sin, dived into sin, the mud of sin, knowing what they're doing, consciously knowing what they're doing, but they prefer it this way. They have their pleasure in this. So this sadness, this sin, produces death. But the other sadness, according to God, is the sadness of repentance when a person falls in sin and says, Oh God, if there's a chance for me, they're sad, downcast, nothing changes their situation. They don't have money, position. They don't have anything in this world which can bring joy to their hearts. If not, that sadness which comes from God for them to convert, for them to repent, that they may come upon it and restore the wounds and make of them a new person. God is mercy. He is compassion. He is love. Not the love we see here, no. No. The love of God is something completely distinct from what we feel in the heart. So much so that the heart is an deceitful element. So the love that comes from God is that which gives us that conscience of what is right and what is wrong. And we do what is right. It's true that at times we have the desire to do what is wrong, to take vengeance on that betrayal, that cruelty, which we, that stab we take on our back. But when we have a divine conscience, we forgive. We forgive because Jesus taught us to forgive. So we forgive. We forgive. But that person who stabbed us on the back, that person will reap the fruits of their cruelty, of their betrayal. If he repents, he has everything to restore his life. If he does not repent, he has everything to remain the same way or even worse and die. And enter hell where he will not come out of. So, my friend, thinking about this, we wanted to make an appeal to you who is watching us. And you were a person of faith, fervorous. You already felt that first love. You had that pleasure of the first love, which is Jesus. But the world, the fantasy of the world, the, the colors, the lights of the world attracted you and you lost yourself. But the love of God remains upon you. It will only be effective in your life when you return to Him. If you don't return to Him, what's the point of Him loving you? You will remain reaping the fruits of that which you have been planting. So, my friend, think. Think big. 
como Deus. <risos> think as God would think. Pense de forma think gloriosa. Tudo nesse in a glorious mundo. manner. Tudo acaba. Everything in this world ceases, everything ends. Dizem Sooner or later, it says that the only thing that is certain in this world is Sei. death. É a morte Very well, que death no to those who, who die in the desert, para que em but Jesus, to those who die in Christ Jesus, então, they start a new life. So, we don't worry with this because we know where we are going. We have the certainty to where we are going. And that's what worries us. You, for example, who is here lost, de sabores, não sabe que Among so much ainda ontem, mishaps, you know what to do with your life. Ontem, Yesterday, é, something interesting. Um, um senhor que tinha um a gentleman que tinha came who had a lot of money, empresas, two businesses, two industries. Com essa, com essa pandemia, ele perdeu tudo. With this pandemic, he lost everything. Everything, everything, everything. And when we lose everything, we lose friends, we lose family, everyone. No one wants to know about us. That's the reality. So he lost everything. So he was walking. This was yesterday. It happened yesterday. Tuesday. He was walking and crying to throw himself in front of a car. And suddenly he stopped in front of a shop. For some reason, obviously it was the Holy Spirit. And a woman came who was an assistant of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God and heard him crying, called him and asked, Why are you crying? And he told this story. And she brought him yesterday here in the church. When he came, he arrived, he received help in prayer and guidance, biblical guidance. He walked out of here a new person. He walked out of here smiling. He walked out of here joyful, meaning the sadness which he was living, God permitted it for him to come before the altar and be joyed by the Holy Spirit. Oh, my friend, if this is your case, the Lord Jesus remains the same. He said, Come to me, all you who, are, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants to give you rest. doesn't matter what you did or did not do. What matters is that you consider this and you humble yourself before Him. He will exalt you. But it's necessary for you to take action because His love will not take action for you, no. His love comes to meet you. But you have to say yes. You have to accept you have to go for it, you have to practice, you have to etc. Do your part. This is the part of all of us. Do your part, my friend, because the desert is not forever. Your desert can end today in the name of Jesus. And I want this to happen today for the glory and honor and praise exclusively of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise be to God. Until tomorrow.